Hello, I'm Jacqueline Battle. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you for the power of your love, your infinite mercy. We thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus. God, we acknowledge your presence right now. You said that you dwell in us richly by your spirit. So right now we want to acknowledge your presence. You said that in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there's pleasures evermore. God will fill with the joy of the Lord because of what we know about your love and your compassions that fail not. Because of what we know about the love that you express towards us through Christ Jesus. And so we just want to say thank you. We thank you, precious Father, for your presence. We acknowledge your presence. And right now we seek your presence to direct us, to direct our path. You said if we would acknowledge you in all of our ways that you would direct our path. And as I lift my eyes up, because the word of God says, look up for your redemption draweth not. I look up, oh God, to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. And as we begin to break open this subject that could be controversial, we're opening it up because you've given us an authority, a power. And we're doing it because there are things that are happening. And if we don't bring it to the forefront of our cognition, of our awareness, then things will be taking place all around us. And yet we won't be able to see it. Our eyes won't be open. And just like you sent a forerunner through John the Baptist to make people aware of the presence of Christ that was coming forth, I thank you, God, for sending forth this word to open up our eyes and our mind, to remove the blindness from our mind and the course from our ears so that when you speak to us concerning such matters, we can hear you. Thank you, Jehovah. Have mercy on our souls. Thank you for forgiving us for our sins. Give us the mind to receive Christ Jesus as our Savior and accept the power of the blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins, delivering us from self-condemnation. We believe your love, O God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know, we've been talking about the form of divination that has to do with the use of blood. Uh, some people call it blood magic. It, it has a variation of names. Uh, it's been called hematomancy. Also, there's another name for it, and it is uh, rhyromancy. And all of these are forms of divination, and we know the word of God. And, and let me just tell you, as we go through this um, time of talking about or this edition or session these sessions of talking about blood magic and how we overcome by the blood of the lamb I want to make sure you understand that my focus is going to be mainly on the truth and the truth is the power of the blood of Jesus my focus will be mainly on the kingdom of God because I believe in focusing on that which is true and as you focus on that which is true you'll be able to recognize a counterfeit. You'll understand a counterfeit and how to overcome any counter petitions that come from the counterfeit. So we know that the power of the blood of Jesus is the truth. And our focus will be there. However, we will touch on and talk about the forms of blood magic and how they're being used. But my focus will always start with and acknowledge the presence of God and the power of God. And so in talking about hematomancy, we talked about this um, previously, it's the practice of divination using blood. So even though we won't find direct references that are um, canonized in the word of God, there are other books that the word of God mentions that may not be a part of the canonization. And yet they were these rituals were written in those forms. So as we talk about the ritualistic uses of, of blood in a biblical context, uh, I want firstly to understand or may help everyone to understand that there's biblical symbolism that refers to blood sacrifices. So when you read in the word of God, how children were being sacrificed to Molech, what, what that really means when you study the history of it is that uh, they would have these orgies. The, the Ammonites would have these orgies. And, and and what would happen with these violent orgies is that during the time frame, children uh, would end up being sacrificed 
to Molech and to other gods. And what they would do is use the blood of the children. Uh, in some cases, they would drink the blood of the children. They would use the blood of the children uh, with incantations and to release powers. Um, there were certain worshipers in the high places that would also use that blood of different children. They, they wanted the blood of children because they were looking for something that was blemishless. And so in the Old Testament, it describes how animals were sacrificed and, and how their blood played a specific role. So they never, people who sacrificed animals for the remission of their sins were not the only group that were sacrificing animals. And so when God tells us in his word that we are not to ingest blood, not to eat blood from the flesh, it was due in part what he told us. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And so incantations could have been spoken and were practiced ritually over those animals in certain cases, in satanic cases. And so he understood how these things could happen because they were using the animals to sacrifice for their sins. But there were another groups, other groups that were using them for satanic purposes. What he said to us is not to ingest the blood because it could be used in so many forms because it's a life form. It is a life form of another being that you are ingesting and, and, and you bring to life certain mechanisms that you may or may not have control over. So to protect us, he said not to ingest those things. Now, I'm told then in the book of Enoch, and I, I have an edition of each form of uh, biblical references of the, of the books that were in the word of God and then not canonized. I have copies of those. And, and in the book of Enoch, it talks about and it makes references to certain type of blood and celestial visions. It talks about how certain practices took place that had to do with blood manipulation. And, and so as we dive more heavily into this, I, I just wanted to let you know that we're starting from a biblical perspective. And every time we talk, we'll talk firstly from the biblical perspective, and then we'll move into the, what I call the counter petitions, uh, the enemies uh, reciprocal. Some biblical prophecies involve blood imagery, such as the blood moon. Uh, we know that in Joel 2.31, it talks about the blood moon, but that's not necessarily the actual use of blood. And also we know that in covenants and oaths in biblical times, blood was used to ratify covenants and oaths, including the marriage covenant. In Genesis 15, 9 through 10, we see an example of how blood was used. Words were used to to commit and blood was released and mingled to solidify the covenant. That's because there is a life, there's an energy. Blood is a witness. Three bear witness in the earth, the blood, the water, and the spirit. So by the water, the blood, and through the witness of the spirit, there is an oath that goes forth, a covenant that goes forth, that solidifies certain incantations and words that we speak. It is not how to go. But by the same token, the enemy uses these type of forces. Again, we'll be using Leviticus 17, 11 a lot, which speaks of the life of the flesh being in the blood. Also, we, we know that the priests, when they were sprinkle the blood on the Ark of the Covenant in Leviticus 16, 14, would also have to declare words. So we know that there is a power in blood. And, and, and anytime something is set up for the kingdom of God, the enemy will always use a reciprocal in that way. So I just wanted to start us off with our first segment of talking about hematomancy and how it's used and how we can use it to overcome. So we start first with the kingdom of God and how he has given us blood to atone for our souls. How that blood has such a, a life to it, such a life force that even in oaths, 
we see covenants in the word of God that were established through the blood. Uh, we see how the blood was used as a sacrifice to atone for sins. And even the blood of Jesus was used to deliver us forevermore from those elements of sin. We're going to talk more about blood divination, but this is where we wanted to start. I'm going to stop right here because there'll be little small segments that we'll be doing. Uh, and in the next segment, I'm going to offer references that you guys will be able to use, books that you'll be able to use to study. I'm not going to go very deep into certain things because these are things that you can research yourself, books that you can buy yourself. I just need you to be aware that blood has been and continues to be used in elements of divination. You need to understand it so you know how to use blood to pray in your life over circumstances and situations that attempt to come against you. Again, I'm Jacqueline Battle, and I want to tell you thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel. And I want you to continue to join me as we break open this area of studying about divination and the use of blood. Oh, it's useful because it, you, it will begin to explain to you certain things that have been taking place in your life that you've not understood. When God gave me this revelation and he began to give me the prayers that I needed to pray over certain areas, certain areas broke up and opened up like never before. Walls and barriers and mountains were just removed. It just were leveled as a plane. And I could walk across the rubble, huh? Just like the walls of Jericho had fallen. What I'm saying to you, is there are forces that may have been set up and they are operating in your life and you're not even aware of it. This information is something that you could add to understanding how to use the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I'll be back. And when we come back, we'll dive even deeper. I'm Jacqueline Babbler reminding you that God loves you and I'm praying for you. Blessings.